life. Every day, things to do. Every week, laundry. Every year, taxes. To make any sense of it at all, we build our world around things, people, ideas, anything we can, attempting to grasp at some sense of meaning in the mundanity of it all. We do this over and over and over again, until eventually, everything begins to feel off. Your clothes never wear as well the next day. Your hair never falls in quite the same way. This is the story of a woman. A woman named Evelyn Wong. A typical, aging, Chinese-born immigrant. Wife, mother, daughter, owner of a failing laundromat. In her mind, she is the one keeping everything afloat. She is the one always picking up the pieces, doing everything she can to make everyone else happy, usually at her own expense. Sound familiar? At any moment, it could all come crashing down, destroying everything, taking her with it. And an untimely IRS audit may do just that. A Watsu technician, I'm sorry. What, what, what Enter Alpha Waymond, a bold alternate universe action hero counterpart to her meek husband. Just as quickly as he arrives, he thrusts the weight of the entire multiverse upon Evelyn, forcing her to navigate a seemingly nonsensical amalgam of infinitely revolving, shifting realities. The Alpha first. Endlessly branching alternate universes, separated by every individual choice anyone has ever made all threatened by the existence of one chaotic entity determined to bring it all down. A jaded, twisted, depressed individual linked to every parallel consciousness of Evelyn's own daughter, Jobu Tapaki. And somehow Evelyn is the key to it all. Algorithms, paradoxes, alternate realities, a truly everything bagel. All at once, everything explodes everywhere in a violent smash of pure blunt force trauma. Before we continue, I need to address something. Make no mistake, everything everywhere is weird. But its weirdness plays a crucial role. Talking rocks, suggestive trophies, hot dog fingers, rakakuni. It's absurd and wacky, often confusing, impossible to explain. And yet, this is all by design. Life is weird. It's strange and odd and hopelessly chaotic. Nothing ever truly goes to plan and things regularly happen beyond all comprehension. Life is weird. We are evolved apes on a moss-covered rock hurtling through an endless expanse of blackness, revolving around a giant burning ball of gas. And yet, we all just agree to pretend that none of this is strange. But when you stop and think about it, every facet of our existence is weird. And the film's strangeness is simply a reflection of this. It is weird precisely because life is weird. By pushing our conception of strange to its absolute breaking point, it brings into focus the chaos and confusion that is our own world, breaking down our entire sense of normalcy. Exactly. <laughs> Somewhat ironically, this is what makes Evelyn's struggles more relatable, by desensitizing us to the entire concept of weird. It gives us a much needed opportunity to drop our guarded, preconceived notions of life, carving out space for its underlying philosophy to take root. This doesn't make any sense. Think about it. I've seen thousands of Evelyns. But never an Evelyn like you. You have so many goals you never finished. Dreams, 
You never followed. You're living. You're worse to you. Evelyn's life is a collection of every failed branch of every neighboring universe. Every choice she has ever made has been the wrong one. But surprisingly, this compendium of failure is actually her superpower. It gives her access to a limitless number of other, more accomplished versions of herself, granting the potential to endlessly expand her multiversal consciousness. And after realizing that this may be the key to saving her daughter, Evelyn dives in completely, verse jumping to every possible reality, pushing her mental capacity to its absolute limit. Oh my god, Evelyn! And like Jobu before her, Evelyn ascends into a true multiversal entity, existing simultaneously in every universe all at once. Cue the bagel. You know why I actually built the bagel? It wasn't to destroy everything. It was to destroy myself. I wanted to see if I went in, could I finally escape? Like actually die. The weight of existing simultaneously in every universe became too much to bear, so Jobu sought an escape yet also a companion, someone who could understand her struggle. At least this way. I don't have to do it alone. And with a newfound multiversal identity, Evelyn finally does understand. Existing in every reality all at once, it shows her the true futility in everything. If everything that could possibly ever exist already does, then what's the point of doing anything? I can think of whatever nonsense I want. It's somewhere. Just give in. There is no inherent meaning, no objective morality. There is nothing to do, no one to care for, nothing to achieve. And so, she gives up. Every relationship in every universe, every connection, every waymond. Burn it all to the ground. What are you doing? Nothing matters, so break everything. Everything means nothing. Throughout the film, we become acquainted with two primary alternate universe versions of Waymond. Alpha Waymond is focused and direct. He has a relentless determination to stop Jobu and save the multiverse. And from a universe where they never married, Business Waymond directly mirrors Evelyn's most successful self. He's charming, confident, and wealthy, a constant reminder of all the achievements they were capable of, but never accomplished. At first, Evelyn sees these Waymans as missed opportunities, halves that could have made her whole. But once Evelyn sees through the multiverse, all of this, just like everything else, ceases to have any meaning. Another year! Pretending we know what we're doing, but really, we're just going around in circles. Doing laundry and taxes. 
and laundry and taxes. Adopting her father's perspective, Evelyn only sees her life as a disappointment. Every failure has piled up into this pointless, nihilistic black hole of an existence. What purpose is there to anything if everything means nothing? Embrace the void of the bagel. Once again, enter Waymond. Not Alpha Waymond, not Business Waymond. Just goofy, everyday, googly eye loving Waymond. Probably making things worse. Hopelessly confused, saddened, and broken. Yet unwilling to give up. Okay, you can let her go. Waymond does something that gives Evelyn pause. How? How could this poor, foolish, Silly little Waymond somehow managed to stave off the cruel, unforgiving hand of the IRS. I don't know. I just talked to her. Waymond then launches into a monologue across the multiverse, laying bare his personal philosophy. Please, can we, can we just stop fighting? You said, this is a very I know you're all fighting because you're scared and confused. I'm confused too. All day. I don't know what the heck is going on. But somehow, it feels like it's all my fault. I always see the good things in the world. But it's not because I'm a genius. It's because I'm a genius. It's because I'm a genius. It's because I'm a genius. I don't know. The only thing I do know is that we have to be kind. Please, be kind. Especially when we don't know what's going on. I understand, but you're not a fool. I'm not a fool. It's just that we have a different way to do it. Finally, Evelyn sees Waymond for the first time. Truly, deeply sees him. His kindness, his warmth, his relentless effort to make everyone around him feel whole, with only empathy at his disposal. How he chooses compassion to make sense of the swirling mass of chaos that we call life, sheltering anyone and everyone he can in the embrace of his heart. He fights nihilism with love and confusion with compassion. You see, Evelyn's trip through the multiverse only exasperated the idea that her whole life was some cruel joke. Seeing how every other version of herself was more successful only deepened her sense of disappointment and self-loathing, especially her most successful version. A stark reminder of all she could have had if only she made the right decisions. With his final line, Waymond brings everything full circle. This idealized Waymond, this reminder of every failure. His biggest regret? Evelyn. All he wanted was another life where they simply did laundry and taxes. The very life she so desperately wanted to escape. 
turns out that silly, naive, googly eye Waymond was the key to everything. Finally, truly seeing her dear Waymond, allowing herself to be immersed in his philosophy, his notion that kindness is not something we're granted, but something we choose every single day. Evelyn finally awakens. She sheds her nihilistic anger at the world and instead begins to see it with the very same kindness and empathy she used to dismiss. She finally understands. Even through the perpetual confusion and weirdness of infinite universes with infinite possibilities, even with the ability to live anywhere imaginable, to be anyone she wants. Her greatest power is the ability to choose what matters, to stay right where she is, to finish her battles and save her daughter. She realizes she can choose to fight with kindness, choose to connect with joy, choose to return to her ordinary life of laundry and taxes, but now with presence, with the newfound ability to be here now, to ignore everything else, because here with her loved ones is everything that matters. To me, this is the true essence of everything, everywhere, all at once. What we so often fail to realize or perhaps willfully ignore, is that our lives are not so different from Evelyn's. This film gives us a much needed chance to zoom out, to see the whole picture. There is no inherent meaning to anything. Everything <laughs> is meaningless. Here all we get are a few specks of time where any of this actually makes any sense. <laughs> then I will cherish these few specks of time. And that's because meaning isn't inherent. It's derived by those who live it. If we can truly understand the meaninglessness of everything, we are granted the ability to see the meaning in anything. Life is given meaning by those who live it. What did he say? <laughs> Without you, there is nothing. With you, there is everything. And everything <laughs> means nothing. Do you still want to do your party? We can do whatever we want. Nothing matters. <laughs> With the meaninglessness of everything comes the freedom to choose what matters. Choose love, choose now, choose kindness. Evelyn, did you hear me? Sorry. What did you say? I'm Tim, and these are my thoughts. For more discussion about everything, everywhere, all at once, or anything else on your mind, be sure to stop by the Discord. And if you enjoyed this video, consider checking out some other videos about my favorite works of cinema. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.